good morning everyone uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, vapor cells okay vapor cells concept uh, so vapor cells what are these vapor cells actually these vapor cells are used to protect the design from the x propagation so now we will see from the starting onwards so what is the use of these vapor cells when we are where we are going to insert these vapor cells and everything so the major part of the dft is converting a design into the scannable design where all the flops are connected in in the form of scan chain so this is related to dft dft entire the design all the flops are converted into the scannable flops and also we will make them as a scan chains with the more complex designs many scan chains to handle hierarchical dft comes into the play the design is big so this hierarchical uh, dft comes into the picture so this methodology hierarchical dft methodology methodology involves the vapor chain stretchers vapor chain stretchers so vapor chains are formed by the scan cells around the boundary of the design actually we have a design so suppose we have a design here this is a core design so the boundary of this core design uh, we are going to form the vapor chains these are the vap vapor chains vapor chains so vapor chains are formed by uh, by the scan cells around the boundary of the design this is our design okay assuming an soc with a different ips so we have a soc with a different ips one ip another ip and another ips ips we can partition the IP. we can partition the design and each ip core has its own set of vapor chains so each ip core it has its own set of vapor vapor chains so it basically isolate the core logic isolate the core logic from the surrounding logic through the vapor chains between the io ports of the core and the core logic so it will isolate it will isolate this is the core logic assume it is a core logic it will isolate the suppose i will read out here so this is a core logic so the core logic uh, we have an input pins uh, let us assume these are the vapor chains so as already in the starting i said that it will uh, block the x propagation that means this is a core logic design it will oscillate it from this vapor boundary cells okay so this is a basic introduction about uh, vapor cells so we will move on to the next so how it helps in testing how it helps in testing so you see here uh, we we have when many vapor cores are integrated in soc here many vapor cores are integrated in soc soc we can choose the blocks we want to test and exclude the rest suppose uh, we have an soc we have different designs that is ips i want to test only this one and remaining these are bypassed for that we need a vapor cells yeah so blocks want to test and exclude the rest rest of the these are excluded that is bypassed will uh, came uh, come to know mm, next com coming slides so a vapor core can be tested unusually we can test it it is unusually and when integrated in soc the testing of multiple instantiations of the same vapor core can be bypassed so by just using the vapor chains with the help of vapor chains we can able to bypass so while accessing the partition level ios means input outputs they might have less controllability and observability from the top level so vapor chains 
include such as IOS and helps in more exhaustive testing for such partitions. Yeah, we'll see here. So here we have a one design, second design and third design. So this is a vapor chain input and this one is a vapor chain output. So these are the vapor chains, vapor chains. These are surrounded by the design core. This we call it as a core A, core B and core C. So if you want to test means we should pass the values like this. We will come to know that actually this is a basic structure. In my upcoming slides, we'll know it. So you see here, there are the two kinds of vapor chains. Vapor chains are two kinds. One second. Vapor chains are two kinds. So we'll see, mm, we'll erase it. Oh, one second. Yeah, now it is visible to everyone. Yeah, now you see here. So we have two kinds of vapor chains. First, then one is input vapor chain and this one is output vapor chain, we call it as. So input vapor chains connect the sequence element at the input side of the submodule. So this is a submodule. So it is going to connect the inputs. So output vapor chains connect the sequence elements at, at output side of the submodule. So this connected to sequential element output side like this. Okay, this one we call it as an input wrapper chain and this one we call it as an output wrapper chain. In between, we have a core logic submodule. Okay, right. So we will move on to the next section. We will uh, know about in depth. Yeah, you see here. You see here the sequential elements in the vapor chains are termed as vapor vapor cells. Sequential element. And if you go to the previous, these are the sequential elements. The sequential elements in the vapor chains are termed as a vapor cells. So these are called unusually vapor cells. These are called the vapor cells. These are the input vapor cells and these are the output vapor cells. This is vapor chain. This is a vapor chain which is surrounded by the core. Okay. So, vapor cells. So, these vapor cells, so these vapor cells are of two types. Each cell of two types. One is a shared vapor cell. Another one is a dedicated vapor cells. So shared vapor cell case, shared, uh, shared vapor cell case, sharing the scan cells already present in the design. The vapor cells which are present in the design can be used as a sequential element that can be used as a shared vapor cell. So dedicated vapor cell, it is a special dedicated vapor cell, inserting a special vapor cell to be used in input and output vapor chain. So, shared vapor cell, already pre-existing vapor chains, core ch flops can be used as a shared vapor cells. Dedicated vapor cell means we have to insert a new vapor cell for a vapor chain operation purpose. So, that is a dedicated vapor cell. So normally in the design, we will have a more number of shared vapor cells, okay, less number of dedicated vapor cells. Yeah. So you see here uh, in vapor, this is a core. This is a core. These are the input vapor cells and these are the output vapor cells. So we have two types of vapor cells, shared vapor cells and dedicated vapor cells. We can able to insert a shared vapor cell Sorry, we insert a dedicated vapor cell here and also here. If there is no uh, shared vapor cell is available, then in such a case for that particular port, we need to insert a dedicated vapor cell here. So let us assume this is a vapor chain and this is a vapor chain. So these are the input vapor cells and these are the output vapor cells. So now what we are going to do? 
so we are going to um, operate these vapor cells in two modes one is in test mode and excess mode in a vapor core vapor core this one is a vapor core vapor core a module with uh, defined vapor chains there can be two cases so testing the logic inside the partition or sub module so this is a partition or sub module at the core so if you want to test the logic inside this core inside this core if you want to test the logic inside this core so we should operate this vapor cells in in test mode or internal mode this can be operated in in test mode so in test mode so these are the input vapor cells and these are the output vapor cells in set in test mode these input vapor cells is going to ship the data into the core ship the data into the core in test mode these input vapor cells are going to ship the data into the core or sub model or a design so and what about the output vapor cells output vapor cells are going to capture the value from this core so during in test mode in test mode or internal or int mode so testing the logic inside the design so input vapor cells are going to be in shift mode and output vapor cells are in be capture mode so these will ship the data into the core and these will capture the data from the sub module or sub module or block okay so that only the input vapor chains launch the data into the inside the logic inside the logic and output vapor chains are capture the data from inside logic so output uh, outside outside data does not matter outside data means this data is does not matter does not matter does not matter core is isolated from outside logic so a core is out isolated from outside logic so core is no this is a core this is isolated from this logic so it is isolated with the help of these vapor cells so input vapor cells are in shift mode and output vapor cells are in uh, capture mode so output and the core cells are allowed to capture here you should remember that uh, in any interviews may ask the question uh what are the uh, cells is going to be capture mode so we should tell that uh, the core logic cells are in capture and output vapor cells are in capture mode during the in test operation output and uh, core cells are allowed to capture this output vapor cells and core logic is allowed to capture so that is a uh, operation of in test mode so in test mode input vapor cells are in shift mode and output vapor cells are, are in capture mode so the core logic and also is in capture mode okay uh, we will see about the uh, x test mode x test mode so we we have a different vapor cells input vapor cells and output vapor cells we can operate these vapor cells in two modes in test mode and x test mode so vapor cells are two types uh, shared vapor cells and dedicated vapor cells so now we are going to operate these vapor cells in x test mode so in x test mode x test mode so we are going to test the logic between the core suppose if we have another core here another core here here also we have vapor cells so in between this is a core 1 and this is a core 2 so our block 1 and block 2 so in between these two we have some combo logic so in order to test this combo logic between the cores so or between the blocks we need to use uh, we need to operate these vapor cells in x test mode so x test mode output vapor cells you see output vapor cells are in shift mode because these are going to ship the data into the uh, this outside the core logic and input vapor cells input vapor cells suppose these are these are the input vapor cells are in capture mode reverse so previously these are in capture mode and these are in shift mode now these are in capture mode and these are in shift mode shift mode so now you see output vapor cells launch the data into the outside logic outside logic outside the core logic and input vapor cells capture the data from outside logic input vapor cells are capture the data from suppose if we insert if we have another core here so 
so this will capture the data from core uh, this outside the block core inside logic does not a matter inside what is there inside core inside the core not a matter not a matter output vapor cells are in shift mode and uh, shift mode core and input vapor cells are allowed to capture core this is a core and input vapor cells are allowed to capture okay now we will see uh, here, uh, the input and output vapor chains are the same logic. Same logic. Only the enable is different. Input vapor cells and output vapor cells uh, are in same logic. Only the enable is different. There are two different signals to operate these vapor cells in in-test and access mode. Those signals are in-test enable, access enable to keep the control on which cells are launching and capturing data which cells are launching and capturing the data. There are certain uh, components which cannot be included in vapor chains. So the components which cannot be included in vapor chains are in input ports which do not drive any sequential cell. Input port which do not drive any sequential cell. Clock ports and bidirectional ports. DFT signals, floating outputs are not suggestible to insert a vapor cells there are certain components which cannot be included vapor chains so these will not be included in vapor chains vapor chains are not inserted for these particular blocks first one is input ports do not drive any sequential cell clock ports bidirectional ports or dft signals floating outputs are not suggestible to insert a vapor cells so in my part two video uh, remaining i am going to explain about uh, how would a dedicated cell vapor, uh, architecture, vapor, dedicated vapor cell architecture, how the uh, shared vapor cell architecture, how capture shift update operations is going to happen. Everything in my uh, two video, I am going to explain it. Please share and subscribe my channel.